as our own experiences of the divine. <laughs> we choose to come together into a covenantal community. We believe in deeds, not creeds. And that what we do in this life matters. <laughs> I think his phone. Got it? <laughs> Beautiful. We believe in deeds, not creeds, and that what we do in this life matters because not all of us agree about what happens in the next life or even if there is a next life. I am Leslie Runnels, your minister, joined with Jason Pesh as worship associate. A big thank you to our greeters, Sandra Shelp, accompanist Megan Smith, Karen Baggett as song leader, Barb Thomas and Dan Phillips making all the magic happen in the AV and Zoom today. If you are visiting us for the first or second time today, would you raise your hands that we may welcome you? Hey, Jessica. Hi, Lee. And um, if you are comfortable with sharing your name and where you are from, we'll bring the microphone to you so that folks on Zoom can also hear you. And if you aren't ready for that today, we respect that too. So just raise your hand if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Okay. We do have some announcements. To, oh, I'm sorry. The AV team, if you would tell us who is on Zoom today. Uh, today on Zoom, we have Amanda Wilson, Gary Happy Eubank, Jillian Odom, Karen Reddy, Kay and Daryl Lynch, and Sally Davis. Oh, wonderful. Hi, everybody. And now some announcements. Next week is Water Communion. So we have some little vials by the name tags out front that you can bring home to put a little bit of water in, or you can bring your water in whatever you have at home that you wanna bring as well. Um, some of you may have gotten an email that said, um, I'm your minister, Leslie Runnels, and I have a very secret mission for you and keep everything really quiet, be very discreet, don't call me about this because I'm going into a meeting. That's a scam. <laughs> and what they'll do is they'll eventually ask you to go get a gift card for them um, that I'll be saying, I want to surprise like Rebecca with a gift card. Would you go pick it up real quick? Like, right. So it, it has this sense of urgency, but I will never do that. I will call you directly. We'll talk about it here. It would happen some other way than the scam way. We will have two cards available to sign during coffee hour for the upcoming wedding of your former minister, Sally White and Mike Dunn. 
They're getting married in Auburn, Maine on September 14th. So please feel free to go sign the card to wish them our best wishes. And after service today, Helene Kelly will be available in the social hall to help people who want to be added to the helping hands list. This is a list of people who might wanna be available to help others when a special need arises, such as a ride to a doctor appointment, a visit to a hospitalized person, help with a few meals, whatever it is a person needs. When something comes up, the pastoral care team will reach out to all of the helping hands people to find a volunteer. Once a volunteer is found, people will get a follow-up email to know that the need has been taken care of. So signing up today will only take a few minutes and it's a beautiful way that we can be here in community for each other when we have needs. All right, now we invite everyone in this sanctuary to please silence or turn off your phones to avoid interference with the sound system. And all those on Zoom, if you would turn off your camera so that we can conserve bandwidth for you. And now your favorite moment where you get to greet each other. Please mill about as you do and say hi. Opening words come from Elizabeth Mount. We gather today on a day of rest. Tomorrow is Labor Day, reserved for rest as well, to honor those who work. Work and rest, rest and work. The cycle of our lives go round and back and forth, sleeping and dreaming, to waking and striving. Here we honor work. We know that the community survives and thrives by our shared efforts. And here we honor rest. We know that the sacred comes to us in moments when ease and spacious breath give pause to honor the wonder of this world. Here, let us come together in solidarity to honor all whose dreams and play and creativity have dreamed a better future. To honor the workers who fought for safety regulations for the weekend, for the eight hour day, for the rights that made the middle class and the living wage. To honor the workers whose contributions of unpaid labor, of child rearing, cooking, budgeting, domestic tasks of many types made their partners work outside the home sustainable. We live because of our laboring ancestors. We thrive because of their dreams while at rest. Today, 
Let us take this time to be thankful for both the work and the rest. Let us honor all who have come and all who will join in the dreams and the work not yet done. Let us worship. Come, let us worship together. All right, today we light our chalice lighting with words from Gary Kowalski. With, we get lit there. Must have the fire. <laughs> All right. With faith to face our challenges, with love that cast out fear, with hope to trust tomorrow, we accept this day as the gift it is a reason for rejoicing. And we also light our peace candle to remind ourselves that peace is a process that requires work and that peace is not merely an absence of conflict, but the presence of justice. And please join our responsive reading number 512, We Give Thanks This Day, from O. Eugene Pickett. Uh, your part is in uh, italics. <laughs> For the expanding grandeur of creation, worlds known and unknown, galaxies beyond galaxies, filling us with awe and challenging our imaginations. Thanks this day. For the fragile planet Earth, its times and tides, its sunsets and seasons. Thanks, Mr. For the joy of human life, its wonders and surprised, its hopes and achievements. For our human community, our common past and future hope, our oneness transcending all separation, our capacity to work for peace and justice in the midst of hostility and oppression. For high hopes and noble causes, for faith without fanaticism, for understanding of views not shared, I give thanks. For all who have labored and suffered for a fair world, who have lived so that others might live in dignity and freedom. Thanks, sister. For human liberty and sacred rights, for opportunities to change and grow, to affirm and choose. Thanks, this day. We pray that we may live not by our fears, but our hopes, not by our words, but by our deeds. Please rise in body or spirit and sing together 1010, we give thanks, we give thanks. And now for some new words. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Every week we make space and time to be human and celebrate our joys and grieve our sorrows together in this sacred space. Should you wish to share a personal joy or sorrow about a person or persons in your life, there is a paper to fill out and place in the basket on the way to the chalice. After our ritual, I will read these personal joys and concerns to the congregation. You may now line up along the wall and select stones or shells from the basket to represent your joys and concerns and gently place them into the chalice of water. We welcome your joys and sorrows with our stones and water ritual. Thank you. 
Dakari missed his first week of preschool due to illness, but he starts Tuesday. Yay. Wishing Nora Soul a happy third birthday this week from Mama and Family. That every person feel included, important, and loved. Xander is on track to graduate Navy boot camp on camp on September 19th. Yay. We will be up there to see him and spend Liberty with him until Sunday. Beautiful. I also want to lift up that Sally Davis has made it back home. Wonderful. Welcome home, Sally. And we hope that and we hope that Pat Harms gets to return home soon as well. We continue to pray for the Palestinians who are now grieving the loss of family and community as the death toll is now over 40,000 people. May we continue to advocate for peace and healing. This community witnesses your joys and your concerns, even the ones not spoken aloud, or the ones that are slowly forming in your heart. May you know you are held in love and that you are not alone. 
Whether you are in grief or celebration, we are here for each other. May you know love. May you know peace. And may you be safe. Okay. Now I'm switching mics. Testing this. Beautiful. So we invite those of you who are young, who brought your backpacks, your lunch boxes, your briefcases, to come up to the front and you can bring your bring your yourselves and your backpack just straight up here, line up here. That's you too, Megan. This is teachers that are returning, students that are returning, principals that are returning, professors. And you can drop your, your backpack off because uh, Sarah and Jason are going to put a little surprise in it or on it. Yeah. Welcome. I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> And then we're going to do a fun activity where you're going to catch some blessings in your backpack. I know a lot of you have already started back to school, back to work. And this can be a time filled with a lot of excitement, but it can also carry nerves with it too. A lot of mixed feelings. Your friends here at church want to show our support to all of you students and teachers by blessing your backpacks and notebooks. We've even brought a special backpack to symbolize the blessings for everyone's backpack and notebooks who got left at home today. That's Jason brought in one. And that can also be for those of you on Zoom. Let's start by understanding and then y'all can go ahead and add the little things. Actually, get a few from Sarah. We can start adding treats. I carry this for off my plate too. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> and guitars. Should have known. <laughs> All right. So let's start by understanding what we mean by a blessing. Can anyone tell me what a blessing is? Anybody know what a blessing is? Wishes and hopes for a good future. Anybody else? Realizing what we have. Sarah, what does a blessing mean to you? It means sending someone good vibes, as they say. <laughs> sending someone good vibes. For me. I think a blessing is when we use our hearts to send love and good care to a person or even to something huge like the ocean. It's how we share, we care, and all of the good things we want to happen for a person. <laughs> By giving your church home here a chance to bless your school supplies, you're carrying their good intentions with you when you go to school or do your schoolwork at home. So what we're going to do, what y'all are going to do, is we're going to come up with a blessing for you. Like, I'm going to offer the blessing of friendship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take friendship and I'm going to roll it up into a blessing like this. And everybody in the congregation is going to do it with me. All right? And now what y'all need to do with your backpack is get ready because we're going to start throwing these blessings to your backpack and we want you to catch them, all right? So can you open your backpack? Can y'all open your backpacks? Can y'all open your backpacks so that we can throw these blessings to you? Yeah? Rough, rough rescue. I see that backpack. All right. You ready? I'm ready. I'm going to show you friendship. You got it? Yay! So throw friendship. Ready? Let's catch friendship in our backpacks. Yeah. All right. What's another blessing we would like to roll up and toss? Success. 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 So let's roll up success. 
All right, ready? We had a big line of backpacks up here from the back. Y'all are probably going to have to do a little, you know, three-point action. Got it. Beautiful. So we've got friendship. We've got success. What's another one? Kindness. Kindness. All right, so let's bless up some kindness. All right, ready? Let's go for those backpacks. All right. Beautiful. Kindness is definitely a blessing. What about, is there a blessing y'all would want? Is there a specific blessing you want? What is it? (laughs) Yeah. Empathy. Empathy. Beautiful. So let's roll up some empathy. All right. Empathy is knowing how to understand what somebody else might be going through, and that's always helpful. Ready? Let's throw it in there. Whew! Lots of empathy. Justice. Justice. Right? Because even in school and work, we need justice every day. All right? Let's get it going. Make this one nice and heavy. Ready? All right, justice. Sarah, do you have one you would like to add? Knowledge. Knowledge, right? We're there to learn, right? Even if we're a teacher or a principal or a minister, right? Let's get some learning going, all right? Ready? Chuck it in there. All right. What's another? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. That is a blessing too, right? Because sometimes we make mistakes at school and we have to ask for forgiveness. Ready? Forgiveness. That's a nice, light, warm one. N- a nice, light, warm one. Here we go. Toss that one. Beautiful. All right. We have all kinds of blessings in here. These are not the last of the blessings you will receive from us. So now your backpack is full of blessings. I want you to remember that your church community has your back this year and every year. We bless you with wonder and curiosity, safety, and fun. And fun. fun. We now invite the children to their religious education classes. We'll join in singing our song, The Blessing Song. Even I'm here, actually, yeah. Either way is fine. and excitement. We're going to center back down, have a few moments of silence and meditation, returning into a different sacred space. We'll begin with taking three long, deep breaths together as we center ourselves.
in the journey of our lives, our spiritual process, we encounter blessings all along the way. In many faith traditions, blessing are se blessings are seen as divine gifts bestowed upon us by a higher power or cosmic force. But in Unitarian Universalism, where we embrace a variety of spiritual perspectives, we might ask ourselves, what does it mean to be blessed? Who is doing the blessing? What is doing the blessing? Who is authorized to give a blessing and authorized by who? As Unitarian Universalists, we can consider the notion of blessings as not merely bestowed upon us by external forces, but also as ways of experiencing and appreciating the world around us. Blessings can be found in both grand and simple moments, an unexpected act of kindness, the magnificence of a sunrise, the warmth of a shared smile, a baby's giggle, holding the hand of a dying elder. In a moment, we're going to do a seated ritual for ourselves, a little recognition of the blessings in our lives, and then we'll have some time to share with the neighbor. As always, if you don't want to participate in the ritual, please just sit quietly in your own peace. I wanna offer up five types of blessings that you might consider in your lives. The blessing of connection. One of the most joyful blessings we can experience is our connection with each other. The relationships we cultivate, whether with family, friends, right here in this congregation, in our broader community, these relationships nurture and deepen our lives in profound and magical ways. These connections allow us to celebrate together to build trust so that we can struggle with hard concepts and context, and to also support each other in those hard times that are always right around the corner. When we cherish our connections, we recognize that in giving and receiving love, we are indeed blessed. The blessing of nature. Another source of wisdom we find in the natural world, a bounty of blessings, the changing seasons, the intricate patterns of leaves, the moldability and durability of clay, the planet, the vastness of the sky, the hummingbirds all remind us of the beauty and wonder of this precious planet that we circle. When we take time to immerse, immerse ourselves in nature, we often find a sense of peace and gratitude. Nature invites us to slow down and appreciate the gifts of the earth, offering blessings that nourish our sweet souls. The blessing of mindfulness. Mindfulness and presence are powerful tools for recognizing and experiencing blessings. When we are truly present in each moment, when we are fully engaging with the experience, with all of our attention, awareness, and consciousness, we become more open to the mystery. When we immerse ourselves in the right here and the right now, rather than being distracted by those past regrets or the future anxieties, we become more attuned to those small miracles all around us. Whether it's saving a meal, savoring a meal, doing laundry, enjoying a moment of quiet, or simply breathing deeply. Mindfulness helps us to notice and be grateful for the blessings that are woven into our daily lives. The blessing of resilience, life, this beautiful, amazing gift, its own blessing is not always easy. And we all face challenges and hardships. Personally, 
and in community. And you might be tired of being resilient, even tired of the word resilient itself. Because over the years, we have had to live through what our systems of oppression deal out each day. Yet even in difficult times, be it political, physical and health, emotional, family struggles, school or work challenges, weather impacts, we can find blessings in our, we can find blessings in our resilience and capacity to grow our capacity to stretch, our capacity to do hard things. Each challenge we overcome, each lesson we learn, each relationship we repair, contributes to our strength and character, not just as individuals out in the world, but here together in this congregation. By embracing our struggles as opportunities for growth, we can find a deeper appreciation for the journey we share together through it all. The blessing of generosity. This last one is one of my favorite ways of experiencing blessings through acts of generosity and kindness. When we give of ourselves, whether through time, resources, compassion, we open ourselves to receive those blessings in return. Generosity creates this cycle of goodwill and fosters a sense of community and that interconnectedness. These generous acts can inspire others to also be generous. It creates this ripple effect where one act of kindness can lead to a chain of positive actions. We create a culture of kindness and compassion by generosity. Okay. So now is time for our little ritual. I'm gonna play for you a song called Call Down a Blessing. Blessing. You're gonna to listen to it and think about where or who or how you do call down a blessing. What allows blessings into your life and into your awareness? When the song finishes, we'll sit quietly for a moment to then count our blessings, to acknowledge them. How many can you count in the short amount of time I provide? And then, when the time feels right, I will invite you to turn to your neighbor to share each, with each other what came up for you. So here is our song, Call Down a Blessing.
Now take just a few moments to call down your blessings. Now that you've called down and counted your blessings, you can turn to a neighbor and share what came up for you. What blessings do you want to share with each other? As we go forth from this place, let us carry with us the awareness of so many blessings that enrich our lives. May we continue to seek and recognize the blessings in our connections, in the beauty of nature, in our moments of mindfulness, in our resilience, and in our acts of generosity. Let us be open to the abundance of life and share that abundance with those around us. And now, please remain seated and join together in singing hymn number 18, What Wondrous Love.
Each month, the Social Justice Committee selects a local nonprofit to share the plate with UCF. All non-pledge contributions in the collection plate or online are split between the nonprofit and UCF. For the month of September, UCF will share the plate with Planned Parenthood. Reproductive justice is facing many threats, and our offering will be shared with a nonprofit healthcare provider, Planned Parenthood South Atlantic. We are happy to welcome Lee Johnson, uh, Director of Philanthropy for Planned Parenthood South Atlantic, to UCF today to learn more about this organization. Uh, please give as generously as you can to support this worthwhile cause. We know how important it is to keep this organization funded and supported. Hello, good morning. Thank you everybody for having me here today at UCF. Um, my name is Lee Johnson and I want to say thank you to Amy Jones for reaching out and having a conversation with me. Um, and thank you so much to each and every one of you for your support. Planned Parenthood South Atlantic serves 50,000 patients across four states. We serve North Carolina, South Carolina, West Virginia, and the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. We provide all types of health care to each and every individual who comes through our door. We provide um, services at fees that are lower than other places where you can go for your health care. Individuals come to us because they're able to receive health care without judgment. They um, are able to receive health care that maybe they don't want to talk to their other providers about. Um, all different types of reasons that people come to Planned Parenthood. We are extremely fortunate. We have 14 health centers where we provide our care across these four states. I've worked for this organization for eight years and I've seen the individuals that come through our doors. I've seen the people who thank us for the health care that we provide, not just to them, but for the health care that we provided for generations before. We have been operating for over 100 years and we have been making a difference in communities across this country for a very long time and we will continue to do that. Your donations will help support the patients that come in through our doors. It will help pay for the cost of their care if they're not able to afford it. Your donations allow us to provide what we talked about earlier today, a living wage. That is something that we are very proud of. Um, we encourage everybody that works with us to have a life outside of their work. We offer a living wage to everybody that is employed with us. It is extremely important that we take care of our community, and that includes our patients that live in the state, that come from other places. It includes our supporters, and it includes everybody who is standing for reproductive justice in their communities. So I want to say thank you. Again, my name is Lee. I will be here um, after the service today to, to chat with anybody and have any conversations, but I greatly appreciate this opportunity. Our patients greatly appreciate this opportunity and your generosity. So thank you so much. Please join in this in blessing this offering with hymn number 402 from you I receive from you I receive to you I give 
together we share and from this we live from you i receive to you i give together we share and from this we live please join me in reading our chalice extinguishing words we extinguish this flame but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now in Espanol. Extinguimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, el calor de comunidad, o el fuego de nuestro compromiso, Estos los llevaremos en el corazón hasta que estemos juntos otra vez. And please stand as you're willing and able for our closing hymn, 1059, May Your Life Be a Song. We're going to sing this through twice in unison, and then we'll take sides. <laughs> side one, <laughs> side one begins, and when we get to sounding, sounding mm. side two starts with the first line. So first we're gonna sing it in unison, now, when we start with the round, Megan is going to leave the piano and hop up and leave that side. I'll try. You only pay attention to her after we've sung it twice, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay. Give us a little intro. to form anything close to a circle that we can come up with. Please join around the edges of the sanctuary, joining hands. If you choose to want to stay in the middle to be surrounded by our presence and love, please do so. We have a circle, the benediction. May you accept this coming week as the gift that it is, a reason for rejoicing. Go now in love.
month long. Yeah, yeah. The work y'all do is amazing and continuing to do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for everything you do.